Hi guys, this is Jason Zack from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we'll focus on hand independence, which is a commonly covered topic we do on our YouTube channel. However, in this lesson, I'm going to try and teach you a way to develop hand independence without the melody per se in the right hand. Usually, a lot of people who want to develop this so-called topic, hand independence, you want to play a tune in the right hand. And then patterns in the left hand. In this lesson, we are going to flip it over to the bass register. And the right hand will just pretty much hold chords. So you're going to play, you could argue, a riff or a bass melody in the left hand. And that's what the left hand's about. The left hand's going to be your melodic element or your bass line, if you want to call it that. And that's what um, you heard in the intro video as well. So the right hand will just take a simple chord. I'm not even going to do a chord progression in this lesson because that's not what this is about. This is about the concept of coordinating the two hands. So if you're struggling with hand coordination at any skill level, this lesson is for you and will hope to offer a different perspective to the subject of improving your hand coordination. So let's get cracking guys. Before we do, all the patterns which you're going to learn in this entire lesson from the basic one all the way to the advanced ones is going to be there notated for you on our Patreon page. You can head over there and you'll also get a MIDI file if you'd like to listen to it and import it into a player. And yeah, so Patreon could work. And on our channel, it'll be great if you're a regular watcher or viewer to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon for regular notifications. If you've not subscribed yet uh, or if you're new to the channel, watch the video, see if you like it and if you do, don't forget to hit the subscribe and give the video a like, leave us a comment with stuff you'd like to learn as well as what you thought about this lesson. So to get started in the right hand, I'm going to take a simple G minor chord. <clears throat> which I like to play this way, D, G, B flat. This way is also nice. This way is also nice, but I'm just preferring D, G, B flat for now. So that's going to be the right hand. And we will be exploring or playing the right hand in two rhythm styles. First off, the pulse of the song. The pulse of the song will go with the tempo in quarter notes. So all you have to do is see how your head moves or how you want to play it or what speed you desire. And that's your pulse. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Right? One, two, three, four. Or you could double the pulse by doing quavers. Quavers will be one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and one and, okay? So that's quavers dividing by two crotchets or quarter notes on the beat with your head with the pulse, following the pulse. I'd also encourage you to get your pianos ready. This is not a very conceptual lesson. It's a very practical lesson. So you can do this with me, pause the video, do something and then hit play again or whatever suits you best. I'd encourage you to get your pianos out or keyboards, whatever you use. So the left hand, I'm only going to use three notes just for demonstrating the concept. Sometimes we know when we have to improvise, when we have to compose or create anything or learn something in music, it's always good to simplify the notes. Don't have too many notes or like this is not even going to be a scale. It's just G, A, B flat. Those are my notes. So G, A, B flat. And if you're well versed with uh, Indian swaras, this would be your sa re ga. I may be using that while singing. It's just a way to name the pitches. So sa re ga. And that's what you're going to do in your left hand. Okay. <clears throat> Fingering. Well, you could go ring, middle, index. Or you could go. I think that's nice. Ring, middle, index. Or you can do a little bit of crossing if you like. I'm just going to go with ring, middle, index. So. Variations are going to just keep emerging and the first set of variations will be combining crotchets or quarter notes with minims or half notes. A half note multiplies the beat or is two counts in a 4x4 four four bar while a crotchet or a quarter note is one beat. It lasts for one beat. In 
any 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 by four scenario so one two three four so the first exercise we have is play two crotchets and then a minim and use these three notes in any grouping you choose i'm going to start with sa re ga a b flat g a b flat so crotchet crotchet minim crotchet crotchet minim okay now what you need to do is slow this down to a point that you can count it don't bring in the right hand until two things happen first sing this la 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 i don't like la 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 so the correct swara sa re ga g a b flat which is a little annoying to say all those letters especially b flat na sa re ga you could just say these syllables with me ga sa re ga if you observe the ga or the b flat is elongated it's lasting for two counts or two beats Now on the right hand we are not going to stop we are going to just do crotchets so in the left hand with the right hand it's going to be something like okay so that's crotchet crotchet hold minim you may find that you know you slip this a bit and you may end up wanting to do you may repeat this or over hit this or you may uh, hit the you may stop the right hand that's happened to all of us so that's wrong your right hand has to keep the pumping going extra right hand extra okay and that adds a really nice contrast to the whole thing right you don't want your two hands to play at the same hit points even though yes they are playing different things you don't want them to hit together or strike together that will start becoming you know like in a drummer from a drummer's perspective a drummer hitting the kick drum and a snare drum together is rather annoying you'll always have dup ta dup ta kick snare kick snare it's always that marriage of the two forces the kick and the snare so in the left hand now we've done this tang 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 let's change the rhythm around and do this rhythm what's happened now i've elongated the middle one 1 2 3 so the middle the middle note is the minim which lasts for two beats slow it down 3 4 try to count it 3 and also sing it la 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 sa re sometimes it helps to close your eyes while playing you may think it's very ridiculous to close your eyes because there's two hands there's so much going on but that's generally how at least i feel i feel a lot more secure with my eyes closed in a lot of the exercises where you don't move your hands much i i agree when your hands move yes you need to use your eyes but your hands are pretty much planted in the same spot so uh try with your eyes closed it improves concentration or focus that's variation 2 minim at the 2 beat so we have done pam 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 minim at the 3 we've done minim at the 2 minimum at the 2 now minimum at the 1 you may find this easier actually one minimum crotch it crotch it minimum okay another variation i like to try would be to not play at the 1 but we'll do that in combination with one of these three patterns which we've done so if you take let's say you could hold that for even longer that would end up being like a dotted minim or tied to the next bars crotchet or you can even lift it as a rest pam 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 pa for lift or rest so that 
that's where you have an absent note at the one and you can do all these combinations this set of four rhythm patterns you can combine them so maybe it builds a bit better phrase I like this one. De da 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 da. There we go. So that's the exercise but to add more flavor you can also play the same drills in the left hand with quaver movements in the right hand that would be eighth notes in the right hand. So slow it down a bit 1 and 2 and 3 so you figure that out so the right hand has these variations you can also do staccato in the right hand like oh choppy on the pulse now it sounds nice if you play staccato in both hands but perhaps if you are a bit more on the advanced side or if you've been playing for a while you could think of staccato in the right hand and legato in the left hand legato in the left hand basically means you play it smoothly and connected the notes last longer but if you see the right hand staccato so staccato the way i like to play it is i like to flick especially when i'm playing chords i like to flick my fingers towards my wrist i've done a video on how to play staccato we've done that video sometime ago on our channel do check it out in the description so staccato in the right and then all the variations in the left okay and that's pretty much it you could also do staccato left all these combinations see how you can adjust each note to your taste slow it down if you're not able to process what's going on or if you're not able to control or feel the dynamics you need to slow it down metronome could also be a good tool when you're practicing but don't forget that it comes after you're able to move your head naturally with the music so just to perfect yourself you could use the metronome for a little bit of fine tuning but this is a nice way to practice then come back to crotchets okay so we've done three notes and what i like to do now in the left hand i'm sure you'll all agree now uh, by watching this video for so long that is getting very boring is just sare ga sare ga is just that so what i would propose now is play around with these three notes you're in a kind of a jail cell where you have only these three notes so you don't have to go sare ga you can go re sa okay re ga sa sa ga re ga re sa let's fool around sa re and i'm taking minim crotchet crotchet rhythm sa re ga sa re ga ga re sa ga re sa re ga re re ga sa sa ga re ga sa sa ga re sa ga i quite like this mm, sa ga re you're not allowed to play any other note sa ga re sa ga and i would always encourage you to sing what you should play or sing in tandem sa ga re sa ga re sa re ga sa re 
So different rhythm combos and different pitch assortments. So that's how you can fool around to ultimately conquer any pitch in the left hand which can hold its ground and freely improvise along with the right hand which is like a steady foundation. Which is why I took one chord deliberately and in the right hand and three notes deliberately in the left hand. So I I agree it's not the most musically musically cool sounding exercise, but it will really help fine tune and surgically really get the hands to to do its thing. And there's something about hand coordination or any hand independence exercise which you practice on the piano. Once you get it, you kind of get it for life. It's almost like a a, a serve in a game like badminton or table tennis or something like that even if you're out of touch with such sports at least you kind of get the serve you kind of know how it feels on the racket okay so moving on i have another set of combos so we've covered crotchet crotch uh, crotchets and minims now you may be thinking hey can i not combine other things you can but i've just kept this lesson short and crisp if you will so the next set of rhythms will include eighth notes so eighth notes in the left hand while we continue to maybe play pulses in the right or eighth notes in the right so i i'll start with pulses so now first thing i want you to do is count in the left hand one and two and three and four and so you're going to access those so one and So we'll take the same three notes, but maybe we can do four hits of the three notes. So maybe Sa Re Ga Re G A B flat A. So for for those of you wondering what scale am I on, I'm on the G scale, G minor scale, or G natural or harmonic minor is unknown because we don't know whether it's that seven or that seven. also be dorian we'll get to that later so now we want to bring in some eighth note so i'll play and then uh, explain so i'm adding a fourth hit or a fourth note which is still part of the same set of 3 so the first variation will be four quavers at the beginning one and two and and what i like to do is hold this on tie it on for another for a minim extra One and two and three, four. One and two and three, four. One and two and three, four. One. You could also now choke. Both offer a very different experience in terms of your exercise routine. It'll it'll be challenging both ways. Da 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 da, holding. One and two and still holding. Now choking at the last one. One and two and three, four. One. Okay. So now the next variation will be don't don't put all of them cl- cluttered up together. You can go maybe a, a longer first note. So. starting at the one but the other notes are pushing more and more to the right so first i did one and two and three four one and two and now i'm pushing the second note to the two one and two and three and four one and two and three and now one and two and three and slightly tricky one and and three and four and one and two and three and rest if you want one and On the four, one and two. How else can we do this? One and two and three and four and one and and three and four and I like that. Three and three and four, three and four and and two and three and four and last variation. Three and four and at the end of the three. Ba da ba dum, ka dum, ka dum. 
parara dum chika dum chika dum parara one and okay we can try a few others as well i mean off the top maybe check that out one two and three and four and yes there is notation available for all these variations but i would also encourage you watch a bit or listen a bit and you only try to notate it or transcribe a little bit and you don't have to get the pitches just get the rhythm so uh wa crotch it crotch it wait pa pa 1 and 2 and 3 and let's start with this 2 3 and 1 and 2 and now let's delay the third note 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 2 and 3 and 4 and relate more stuff like this 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 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 so you could play around with all these eighth note variations and just to leave you with something cool to practice your independence and actually sound like you're playing an actual song which i i also kind of miss when i I'm doing this lesson as most of my lessons I'm actually tending to talk about some use case in some song. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to go to the channel home page Nathaniel School on YouTube and you'll find an array of lessons which we do. You could also go to nathanielschool.com where we've segregated the lessons by a uh, level beginner intermediate advanced also things like hand independence you touch the filter and it shows you all the lessons which have been done on hand independence and numerous other topics like chord studies learning your favorite songs and so on and so forth you will also again uh, it is a reminder if you'd like if you like what you're learning which i hope you do you've watched for a while now head over to our patreon and get yourself a lot of my handwritten notes for not only this lesson but everything we've done in the past at least over the last 3 4 years and pretty much whatever we are going to continue to do moving forward so just to leave you with something cool uh, i i'm sure you've heard this one right we don't need no okay so variation 1 not the original riff but it will build up to it so 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 3 and 4 okay 1 it's notated check it out and 4 1 if you don't read it's okay you can keep following me and don't forget to play the pulse in the right education we don't need so let's break that down bum ba bum see the notation two and three. if you can't read no problem just follow along i'm repeating two. and don't forget to play the pulse at all times in the right hand two. getting closer to the original one with the second variation so that's an and let me break that out one and two and three and four we don't we the harsh line to sing but go for it it's a fun song i'm sure back in the day everyone was singing this ba bam 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 ba bam bam old variation bam ba bam 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 ba bam new bam ba bam bam 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 2 and 3 and end of the 3 that's the variation now lot of ends that's kind of the original group we don't need no education it's kind of a combo don't need no education param pam so that's one and two and three and lot
lot of ants one and 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 so right so i hope this exercise or this approach to practicing the piano to develop hand independence keeps you very active for a few days or weeks or however long it might take you uh, the thing with hand independence as a subject or as a study whenever you devote quality time towards it even if you feel the rewards are not coming or if the actual execution or the result is not coming don't worry stick to the process that's all that matters because that one hour you put in to develop your hand independence and the respect or the time you've given for your music practice will always get the rewards in due time think of it as watering a plant to eventually become a tree it's going to take time so sleep over it practice let your brain sort of fry a little bit it should be sort of pumped up and cooked a bit but then it has to cool down eventually so give it another go and then it's going to start tasting better and better and better as the days go by uh, and if you're a beginner take it slow uh, don't you don't have to do all the variations i gave if you are an intermediate or an advanced player yes by all means i think you should try out all these variations and if you are an advanced person you can also fool around with other things it doesn't have to just be a, a rather boring g minor chord planted or rooted there it can be anything else it's just three notes first uh, segment of the video i gave you three notes with just three note groupings and the second part where we introduced eighth notes or quavers we took three notes with four note combos or four note uh, bars of information using rests using different variations the notes are there do check it out that will supplement your learning there's also midi you can listen to it quite comfortably right guys thanks a ton for watching the lesson this is jason zack from nathaniel do stay tuned to our channel for lots more coming your way cheers